So if you come because you need some ore placed, then I gotcha. So today I'm going to be showing you how to make this ore placer behind me. And if you don't know by now, you can call me Zoofy Zuffy Zoofy or Zoof, and this is Zoofology. So you're going to want modular routers, XNet, RF Tools Utility, and some form of power mod. And it would be a lot easier for you if you did have storage drawers, but if you can find a way to make it work without it, more power to you. All right, so let's go ahead and start up with our routers, uh, router placement. So let's place a chest. This is where your router is going to pull from. Um, so make sure the routers are in range of this, unless you want to use a bunch of uh, range upgrades, which I don't suggest. Um, from there, find where you're going to stand. If you're going to stand here, then break one lower, place a router. From there, you're going to come and you're going to do this. And also, it does not matter which orientation these routers are. Place routers along all of this until you have a shape that looks like that. You can break these. You don't need those anymore. And now come underneath it and place another eight routers. So it will take 17 routers altogether. This router is in charge of vacuuming. The top routers are in charge of placing the blocks in the bottom route are actually in charge of placing the top routers. So let's talk about the upgrades you're going to need in these and the modules. Starting off, you're going to want eight puller modules, a mod filter, a vacuum module, 16 sync upgrades, 16 extruder modules, and then I think this is 89 speed upgrades. Yes, yes, quite a bit, I know, but you wanted to go fast. Okay, let's go ahead and start with the puller module. Make sure it's assigned to this. Um, take your mod filter. You want it to have anything from the vault. So now anything that is the vault will be allowed in this mod filter. And you're going to put that mod filter in here as a whitelist. That way it only picks up um, the vault items. Now you could whitelist every single ore if you want to that you're going to use in this, but I just chose a quick route. Okay, now you're going to want 16 sync upgrades. These are going to make sure that they activate at the same time so it looks clean. Okay, we're going to set eight of them to one and the other eight to two. Extruder modules, you're going to set these to up. And then your speed upgrades, we'll just put them in, in the machines. Okay, so starting off, I'm going to give you a moment to pause the video to make sure that all of your top routers that are not the center router on the top look just like this. So now we need our sync. We have our sync upgrades left and the rest of these extruders and our vacuum. We'll go ahead and put the vacuum right in there. And the vacuum, you're going to want to have speed upgrades too. I totally forgot about that. You want to max it out. And also a fast, yeah, fast pickup augment would also be quite nice to have in this. And some stack upgrades now that I think about it. Um, I don't know if this is the right one. Yeah, I think it is. Does it go in here? No, I think it goes in there like that. Yep. Okay. Go ahead and give the video another quick pause and make sure that all of your bottom routers have these same modules in them. All right. So I want to go ahead and start setting up the logic that's involved in this. Start off with a advanced blue connector. It can be any color, I guess. Any kind of connector from XNet. Place it on top of this chest. Let's just, first off, let's just imagine that your drawer network is over here, right? You've got a controller, and then you've got a whole bunch, you've got all your ores um, in the drawers. I don't know if that's how you have it set up. I don't even know if you use a drawer network, but... That's what I do, so that's what I'm going to show off. Plus, these things are super, super nice to pipe from. These controller slaves. So let's say you have, you could either have a slave here or you could have it over there. Just find a slave or the drawer controller that's in your network. And go ahead and add a connector to it and pipe it all the way so it's close to your chest. 
right there. So now go ahead and grab your controller, connect it to them. And then on this side, we're going to do a torch. We just need a torch connected to it. And then find a way to invert that torch. Yeah, just like that. And that's, for the most part, your redstone. A lot of your logic for this, you are going to have to power this. So just make sure this has some type of power. Okay, so from here, you want to go ahead and connect using the cables all the way to here so that the top ones need to have connectors. Um, the bottom ones do not need to be connected at all. So I'll just use normal cables and not connectors. All right, next up, we're going to be going over the logic in the controller. When you're looking at the XNet menu, go ahead and create a xnet.logic channel anywhere. It doesn't really matter. Um, go ahead and find all of these item routers, every single one of these. And on that channel, you're going to create an output of redstone and set it to one. It can be anything really, just not zero. Um, I'm going to speed this up a little bit. And next, we're going to go ahead and set up our item channel. Okay, let's go ahead and do the item channel. Let's come here, create item channel, create. And we're going to go ahead and insert a maximum of 64 into this chest. So only 64 are allowed into this chest. Oh, I didn't actually make it. Weird. Okay. From there, you're going to say it's only allowed to come in this chest when it gets a redstone pulse which is going to be given by that redstone torch. Okay, from there. Oh, that's why. <laughs> that was the wrong channel. So now we're going to have to set up our slave to actually export the items. So grab a filter. This is probably the easiest way to do it. If you have a, all these ores in a drawer system, then you can just come through and crouch right click on all these. And now they're all added. Or you could just manually shift click them all in. Yep. So it's right there. Let's go ahead and add the filter right there. And we're going to tell this filter index one. Alternatively, you could just add them to this. That's possible too, but I find that much quicker. And create we're going to tell it to extract a full stack and we want to slow it down to to one second so that that it's not uh faster than a, than a single pulse let's go ahead and make our second item channel create and this is just going to be giving us back so one two three four five i think it's this one Yep, so find out where that middle one is. For me, it's the fifth one down. It's probably different for you. Um, and go ahead and create an extract. And you can do a stack, that's fine. Every second, that's fine, doesn't really matter. Um, as long as it's like a second or lower. And then it's going to insert into here. And that's going to handle it, putting it back into your drawer network as the fortune doors. So we need to go ahead and tell these bottom ones when to basically pull the top routers back into their inventory. Um, go ahead and start with a transmitter. And then make sure you have a receiver. Well, eight receivers, to be exact. And you want to point all of these eight receivers into the bottom of these eight routers. So you just take the receivers, make sure they are linked. Yep, it's linked. And just make sure that you can point them into the bottom of all of these. And this one is going to be a problem because I made that dumb. There we go. Now I can actually access the bottom of this receiver. So now, whenever that gets a redstone signal, it's going to place these above it and whenever it loses a redstone signal then it will um 
basically pull it back into its inventory. And we need that for it to be able to, these top ones, to continue placing. Go ahead and take a sequencer from RF Tools Utility. Point that into it. So go ahead and copy exactly what you're about to see from this sequencer. Last two on the top row are going to be white. The whole second row is going to be white. Everything else black. And on white, this needs to be loop four, a delay of five, and sequence length of 16. Oh, there we go, 16. And I'll give you a moment to make sure you got it. That's pretty much most of the redstone right there. Um, go ahead and grab yourself a receiver. And this should make sure that this has no channel. Receiver with no channel. Um, we're going to go ahead and set up. How are you going to activate this? So I'll go over the practical and also the elegant way of doing it. So practical. Lever. And a transmitter. Have the transmitter set to the same frequency. And make sure it's pointing into it. That works. However, if you want it more elegant and you want it to be done on a screen, make sure that you have, for one, a screen controller somewhere within range. I don't know what the range is, unfortunately, but it needs to be powered. Screen controller. Um, we'll worry about that in a second. And let's go ahead and place it somewhere where we can have the screen. Right here. All right, you need a redstone screen module and a button screen module. Take both of these and assign them to this. Crouch, right-clicking. That's weird. They're set to two different channels. It's good now. Okay. All right, so resident screen module on the top and the button module next. Go ahead and come down here and scan. There we go. So there we go. Um, you can name it however you want. You can color it, all of that. I'll let you handle that. So I even thought about it earlier, guys. As you can see, this is actually how you need to have this lever set up. So, when I turn this on, it should just kind of work. However, now you need to put all of these top routers inside the bottom routers. So let me go get a pickaxe really quick. And I also need to not be in creative. I'll be right back. Oh, right. Um, okay. So, like I said, take your top routers, put them inside your bottom routers, and they should immediately start placing. And after this, you're essentially done. Um... To try it out, I guess we can just on. Second. Oh, aha! <laughs> I need another receiver. Yep, we don't have. So this transmitter should also be transmitting to here. Beautiful. Laramar. Benny a tight. Who did I? Yeah, Paynite. So we are officially finished with the build. Let me know what you think of it or if you plan on using it in your own playthrough. Um, leave me a comment. I always love to hear from you guys and I'll see you on the next one.